Technologist Todd Klassen. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Good morning to you and welcome to Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Megan Shin. It's 5 o'clock here on your Monday morning. And I'm Rafael Sanchez with your headlines on this January the 18th. It's uh, kind of uh, kind of exciting to see some of the advances that we've made that he fought for. However, we've got to keep in our mind and hang on to our faith that things are going to get better. On this Monday, reflecting on the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This morning, a look back at the progress made and the changes still in the making. Plus, a boom in business for downtown restaurants this weekend. Why they see this as a good sign of things to come. And we're finally hearing from Victor Oladipo about his future, his farewell to Pacers fans, and what he's saying about his time here in the Hoosier State. Thanks for joining our team here on this holiday and this Monday. We do have some snow flurries flying out there, so we want to get right to Todd Clausen. Hey, Todd. Yeah, a few flurries out there this morning. Not going to cause too many issues on the roadways. That is the good news. Later on this evening, though, for some of you it could be an issue more on that in just a few minutes here are the visibilities as you look across parts of the area on our uh, tower camera and you can see that as you look to the west uh, here past white river state park uh, there's no visibility issues but there are a few snow showers in uh, northern portions of marion county right now 28 in indy as well as bloomington 30 is the current temperature in lafayette here are these snow showers moving through and they continue to fall apart between muncie and the anderson area some snow showers as you work your way towards Newcastle. They'll be heading in your direction. And then a few here on the eastern side of Marion County, just east of downtown. And as you work your way north towards Broad Ripple and Castleton, a few light snow showers. Same as you work your way south towards Franklin Township. And there's just some patches of hit or miss snow across parts of the area. This is the way it's been the past couple days. We told you we'd keep getting snow showers uh, off and on throughout the weekend and it played out perfectly with just uh, some minor accumulation. As we work our way throughout the daytime hours today, we don't really do a whole lot. Clouds in place, a few flurries, high temperatures just above the freezing mark this afternoon. But this evening, a winter weather advisory goes into effect for some counties across the area. More on that, Lauren, coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you. Let's take a look at traffic this morning. Up on the northwest side, this is I-465 near West 86th Street. You can see traffic there is quiet this morning. No delays to slow you down. But now I want to take you to a traffic alert that we have for drivers this morning. You can expect to see some changes as the North Split Reconstruction Project continues here in downtown Indy. NDOT says the southbound I-65 ramp to Michigan Street will close at 7 p.m. on or after today. Now, it's not scheduled to reopen until late spring or early summer. The exit to Ohio Street will remain open through the Michigan Street ramp closure. Raphael? Lauren, on this Monday, the country reflects on the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., especially, Megan, in light of current events. That's right, Roth, and WRTV's Troy Washington has a look at a process in, towards progress. The Master's Touch Barbershop on the east side is a place where men can go to get a fresh cut, line up their beard, and just talk. It's uh, kind of a... Uh, kind of exciting to see some of the advances that we've made that he fought for. However, we've got to keep in our mind and hang on to our faith that things are going to get better. As we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, right now in the barbershop, there's a lot of talk about how the legacy lives on. So much turmoil, but the hope that I see is the wins that took place down in Georgia, the historic wins there, and to see that the pastor who is presiding over the church that he pastored uh, was the one who won down in Georgia. I think that that is so encouraging and he would be so refreshed if he were here. And so I believe he's smiling down from heaven to see that the work is continuing. But then there's the other side of things in light of the Capitol protests that took place in Washington, D.C. on January 6th that won't be soon forgotten. We still got work to do, there's no doubt about that. The prejudice is still there. What Martin Luther King fought for and ultimately died for is still prevalent today. You know, it definitely was a double standard. As many reflect this year, it's just hard to ignore the current climate. But yet and still, the quest for the realization of the dream continues. Working for you, Trey Washington, WRTV.
Troy, thank you for that report at 504 on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It's also known as a day of service. And as the pandemic continues to cause a strain on local organizations that rely on volunteers, others are stepping up to help. Today, United Way is urging Hoosiers to find a way to give back and improve your own community. You can visit their online portal, volunteercentralindiana.org, where you'll find both person, in-person and virtual opportunities. They range from helping the North Side Food Pantry to delivering food to trucks, or you can even help transport Hoosiers with disabilities from New Hope of Indiana. You can also donate to Horizon House, where they help those experiencing homelessness. Right now, they're in need of blankets, winter clothes, and basic household items. It's a great um, phenomenal day to have off from work. Um, MLK, they have school, um, school kids not having to study um, to, in order to think about ways they can give back and they can serve, but it will be long past MLK Day that we need everybody to um, consider helping us make this community better. It's going to be a long road, and, but we're on the path to rebound and recovery as long as we have our community united with us. Well, there's a special section dedicated to MLK Day of Service on the volunteer portal for those interested in giving back. Raphael. And now to the latest on the coronavirus, the pandemic and its impact right here on our state. Health officials are now reporting more than 3,200 new cases of the virus. That's the lowest number in about a week. Health officials also report an additional 24 Hoosiers who died from COVID-19. Since the pandemic began, more than 8,900 Hoosiers have died with the virus. Events this weekend in the Circle City brought hundreds of people to downtown businesses. Those include events like Disney on Ice and a cheer competition. This morning, WRTV's Kelsey Anderson joins us live with what the boost in business means to them. Good morning, Kelsey. Hey, good morning. So we spoke to the owner of Sauce on the Side, a fairly new restaurant downtown on the, or near the Circle, and they say this weekend was one of the best weekends they've had since the, since the pandemic began. So Wednesday marked the first time since the pandemic started paying spectators were welcomed back into Bankers Life Fieldhouse. The Circle City also hosted a national cheerleading competition this weekend. And a year ago this month, Sauce on the Side, which sits directly across from Bankers Life Fieldhouse, opened its doors. The owner says to go curbside and takeout got them through the pandemic, but he's excited more and more people are headed back downtown. This has been an exciting week, I think. I think any person you talk to that operates from a business standpoint, at any business standpoint, that deals with, you know, general public is super excited about everything that's been going on down here. So the owner of Sauce on the Side says he hopes he can continue ramping up business as the years as the year goes on. Now he is looking now to hire additional staff to help as more events are planned for downtown Indy, including March Madness just coming up in just a few months. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. Kelsey, thank you. The time right now is 5.07. Victor Oladipo has finally broken his silence about his upcoming departure from the Pacers. Last night, he released a statement via Twitter. In it, he says Indiana has been his second home since he first stepped the, in, the foot in the door at the campus of Bloomington at IU. And he went on to thank fans for their support of the past three years. After being traded to the Pacers in 2017, Oladipo was the NBA's most improved player the next season. The Pacers traded him last week to the Houston Rockets as part of a four-team trade. Karis Levert will now play for the Blue and Gold. His debut is uncertain in the wake of a health issue. Right now, want to get a check of our forecast here on this holiday. Todd, a lot of kids may be not heading out to the bus stop today, and they can stay bundled up inside. Yeah, they stay bundled up inside. I saw a few people over the weekend trying to do a little sledding uh, out there with the little snow that we had. And uh, we're still dealing with some snow showers making their way through central Indiana here this morning. Uh, the main roads were okay on my drive into work this morning, but some of the side roads had a, a little dusting of snow. We're still dealing with some snow showers here as you work your way from Indianapolis uh, east towards uh, Beach Grove into portions of uh, Warren Township, even a few flurries down towards Greenwood and then some snow showers uh, just to the southwest of Muncie, stretching southward down towards uh, Newcastle. The big picture, it just shows you these uh, spotty snow showers off and on, not only here in central Indiana, but to our west and to our east. And we will get a push of uh, more snow showers heading in our, our way as we work our way into the evening hours. I think the daytime hours today, it's just a flurry or two, but the more significant snow will come in later on this evening in southern locations. Locations. Winter weather advisories will go into effect. We'll break it down for you coming up in just a couple minutes. 
Uh, Todd, thank you so much. A new proposal could put the brakes on Indigo's mass transit plans. Up next, a closer look at the impact on projects which have been in the works for several years. And President-elect Joe Biden has announced several top priorities for when he takes office this week. Straight ahead, what the policy changes could mean for you. And we are monitoring your commute this Monday and this holiday. This is up in the Anderson area. Traffic starting to pick up here on the roads on I-69. Your Scatterfield Road, we did see some flurries flying in the area. You can see the roads are wet, so just use caution around central Indiana this morning. It is 5.09. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The car you want, the way you want. Welcome back. The time right now is 512 on your Monday. Covering the State House this morning, new legislation could put the brakes on additional mass public transit lines here in the Circle City. Senator Aaron Freeman filed Senate Bill 141. Under his proposal, Indigo would face penalties if it doesn't fund at least 10% of its operating budget with money from sources other than taxes and fares. Penalties would also be incurred if Indigo's annual total from ridership fares doesn't equal 25% of its operating budget. State law already requires those funding amounts but doesn't include consequences. Freeman's proposal would withhold additional funding from tax dollars if those goals are not met. That could prevent Marion County from completing the purple and blue rapid transit lines and related projects. Also at the State House, there's a renewed call by Democrats to increase Indiana's minimum wage. The current federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. It's been that way since 2009. The Democratic plan would boost Indiana's minimum wage to $10 an hour starting in 2020, 2022, excuse me, and then it would increase in $1 stages until it reaches $15 an hour. Republicans who control the State House do not support the proposal. Governor Eric Holcomb, who is a Republican, said his goal is to help workers advancing beyond low-paying jobs. He says he wants more state funding job training and to assist people into better paying careers. Making it from the state house to the state of affairs, at least one person from Indiana is among those now arrested after storming the Capitol back on January the 6th. John Schaefer turned himself in on Sunday afternoon. The native of Franklin, Indiana, currently living in Columbus, he's a guitarist for several heavy metal bands, most famously the band called Iced Earth. The FBI says that Schaefer is the man seen in a viral photo wearing the blue jacket. Schaefer was allegedly among rioters who sprayed Capitol Police with bear spray. In images captured from that riot, Schaefer can be seen wearing a baseball cap that says Oath Keepers Lifetime Member. The Oath Keepers describe themselves as a militia of former law enforcement and military personnel. Schaefer is now facing six criminal charges. Lauren? And Raphael, a massive security operation is in place in Washington ahead of President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration set for Wednesday. That's right, Lauren. The nation's capital is on virtual lockdown. Authorities say a peaceful transfer of power is the top priority. Streets in D.C. are now blocked, barricades are set up, and thousands of National Guard members are on patrol, each one getting vetted because of concerns about a potential insider threat. Authorities warn domestic extremists are the biggest risk right now, not just in Washington, but at state capitals nationwide. The FBI says it's combing through more than 150,000 pieces of digital evidence as investigations into the insurrection continue. And this morning, the social networking site Parler is back online. Amazon's web service removed it last week after some of their far-right members made threats of violence on it. In a comeback message dated Saturday, Parler CEO wrote, Hello world, is this thing on? End quote. A search shows Parler's new domain is registered to Epic. That company works with another social networking site called Gap. During his final days, President Trump plans to issue about 100 pardons and commutations. That's according to three people that are familiar with this matter inside, of course, the White House. Sunday, the White House held a meeting to finalize the list of pardons. The list will reportedly include white-collar criminals, high-profile rappers, and others will also be included on that list. For now, though, the president is not expected to grant himself a pardon. There had been some talk that he was considering a self-pardon and pardons for his adult children as well as his close allies. 
And as the presidency, presidency changes hands this week, so will several policies that affect your everyday life. President-elect Joe Biden has said that his top priority for change is COVID-19. On that list includes enforcing a mask mandate, issuing more vaccines, and passing more economic relief. You could also see changes when it comes to the environment. During President Trump's turn, he rolled back several climate change initiatives. Biden says he wants to restore those restrictions. He also wants to expand on the Affordable Care Act and include measures to make insurance less expensive. There could also be more rules when it comes to gun safety. Lauren, January is more than halfway over, so here's the question. Have you been sticking with your New Year's resolutions? Well, Ditch Day hit over the weekend, and that's the midway point in January when people give up on their goals. But mental health experts say if you were part of that crowd, don't be too hard on yourself. 2020 was a particularly tough year to get through, and some of the same issues are carrying into 2021. Therapists say if you gave up on your external goals for yourself, like losing weight or breaking a bad habit, try focusing on internal goals instead. Things like practicing mindfulness and having more positive attitude. I know someone with a positive attitude is Todd Glosson, though, so uh, hopefully it's a positive uh, yeah, yeah, You know, I, I wish it was 80 and sunny here, and that was my positive attitude. But hey, you have to make the best of uh, what it is here weather-wise, and it's the middle of January, so we're not in uh, the teens. We're not below zero. Uh, we're in the 20s and uh, 30s, and that's pretty seasonable for this time of year outside right now. Lots of clouds still a few snow showers 28 right now is the current temperature feels like 19 though in uh, the city when you factor in that west wind uh, that is at 14 miles per hour feels like 21 in bloomington 16 is what it feels like up in the peru area so you definitely need to bundle up the day is very similar to yesterday temperature wise and wind chill wise will be in the teens here this morning for your wind chills and then eventually later on this afternoon real field temperatures will still be in uh, the low 20s across uh, the area with actual high temperatures temperatures that'll be topping off in the low to mid 30s across the area. It's a chilly day for us. There's not much of anything in the way of sunshine heading our way and there will be the chance of a few flurries uh, out there as well. We're still dealing with a couple lingering snow showers. Uh, this has been the case really since uh, Friday afternoon when they came in. Uh, Saturday and Sunday we were dealing with snow showers. It's just down to a few flurries here in the Muncie area and as we work our way into eastern portions of Marion County, a little bit of a snow shower making its way uh, across parts of uh, that part of the county, getting ready to push over into Hancock County. But there's still more snow showers off to our west, and we'll get a bigger push of some snow shower activity coming in later on this evening. Here's the deal, though. It's only for some of you. For those of you in northern locations, it's probably just a flurry or two throughout the course of the day today. Uh, for those of you in southern locations, you'll have the better potential to get into some accumulating snow later on. Now, it's after sunset tonight, so during the daytime hours, it's just a few flurries here or there. And then as we work our way into the 10 o'clock hour and then overnight, we'll have this band of snow that'll scoot through uh, southern locations. It may clip Indianapolis with some light snow showers, but it's mainly a vent uh, for southern portions of central Indiana. Not talking about big snows, but enough probably to slicken up the roadways, given the fact that it's coming in as the sun is down during the overnight hours and temperatures are a little bit cooler. But there could be some areas from Bloomington back towards Terre Haute in that one to two inch range. Most of the rest of the area is probably looking at about an inch of accumulation, but the National Weather Service has put out this winter weather advisory uh, for counties to the south. It'll last until Tuesday, 7 a.m. For most of us, once you get to southern Indiana, it may last a little bit longer. Uh, but again, just be a little bit cautious tonight if you're going to be on the roadways in that area. Then tomorrow we'll start to get into some sunshine, and that'll set us up for a decent middle portion of the week in which we'll have temperatures that'll slowly start to moderate on Thursday up to 42 degrees, only come back down into the 30s as we head into the weekend. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic over on the east side this morning. This is I-465 and Interstate 70. You can see traffic in that area is traveling up to speed as you're heading out the door this Monday morning and on this MLK day. No crashes right now on the roads to slow you down, Megan. All right, thanks, Lauren. Well, an Amazon warehouse in Alabama could be the first American-based union. Workers at an Alabama plant are set to vote on the proposal next month. About 6,000 full-time, part-time, and seasonal workers can cast mail-in ballots to vote on the topic starting February 8th. The effort comes as Amazon continues to face criticism for not having enough safety protocols during the pandemic. A union would give employees a louder voice in those safety standards. It would also give them a collective bargaining power 
power on things like pay and benefits. And this is not the first attempt by Amazon workers to create a union in the U.S. The union election was held in 2014 at a Delaware warehouse, but workers largely rejected that effort. Bumble is getting ready for a big date on Wall Street. The female-centric dating app has filed its initial public offering paperwork. With over 42 million users, Bumble has provided a lifeline for many singles to connect during this pandemic. It is now poised to follow other recent successful tech IPOs like Airbnb and DoorDash. Bumble is currently worth just under $489 million. Well, if you're looking for a new gig, Hot Dog, do we have a position for you? Coming up, how you can make money cruising the country in this iconic vehicle. Looks fun and ahead at 5.30 in Indianapolis, mother is now offering a reward for information that leads to an arrest and conviction in her son's death. How you can help bring justice and peace to the family. Time now is 5.22. We'll be right back. RTV. Welcome back. If you're looking for a fun job, here's one you can relish. So Kraft Heinz is looking to hire a new team, why not, of hot doggers, right, to drive its famous Wienermobile across the country. The lucky dogs, as they're known, who get hired will get a stop at more than 200 events, create some social media content, as well as doing some news interviews. An ideal hot dogger is an outgoing, friendly college graduate who has an appetite for adventure. They must also be willing to see the country through the windshield of the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile for one year. Interested candidates need to apply by January the 31st to be considered. And I think, Todd, I think I've seen the Wienermobile at the Indianapolis 500 at least one year. Not a bad gig to get. Uh, you get to travel the country, and I hope you get all the food you want to eat right when you're traveling. <laughs> all right, all the food, mainly hot dogs probably, but uh, nonetheless, <laughs> I bet you it has like a consistent stash of hot dogs ready to eat in the back of it, Raphael. <laughs> I, I, I don't know for that for sure, but I'd like to think so. All right, outside right now, uh, we're dealing with a few snow showers still lingering across parts of the area. Uh, more flurries than anything. It honestly looks a little worse on radar than it is, and you see exactly how spotty it is. As far as today goes, just lots of clouds around. Again, a few snow showers and or flurries virtually at any point throughout the day today, but at least during the daytime hours, it's not going to put down any accumulation, about 30 degrees by the time we get to the noon hour. Highs today only right around 32 to 33 degrees. Now this evening's a little bit of a different story as another wave of more significant precipitation heads our way. We'll break that down for you as well as the latest news headlines coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on WRTV. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Now at 5.30, with the inauguration only days away, security across the country is ramping up. The measures now being taken here in Indianapolis and in D.C. And this past weekend, one of the busiest for downtown businesses in a long time. Why one owner says this is a sign of hope for months to come. Thank you for starting your morning with Good Morning Indiana. And ladies, I could not find a green shirt this morning, so all I could find was the green tie. Thus, it works. I'm all dressed up for you today. Can we not do green for a while? The green shirts in the laundry. I'm just saying. Please. Yeah, no worries. You're looking well, classy though, Ralph. It is a formal day at the Sanchez household today. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. And we want to get to Todd right now for a look at our forecast. See what you should wear if you do have to head out the door this morning, Todd. You, you, you know, Raphael, I was like, man, Raphael's looking dapper here this morning. You know, in that time. I haven't, I haven't seen you in the tie in a while. So uh, I know. Lo I know. Looking good there. Looking good as always <laughs> outside right now. Uh, Lauren, to answer your question, uh, you're just going to have to bundle up. Nothing new here in the middle of January. Temperatures this morning very similar uh, to what they have in the past few mornings. 28 in India as well as Bloomington right now. 25 in Peru, 30 in Muncie. This camera is looking off towards the west. And as you look west across uh, Marion County, no visibility issues. If we were able to flip this camera around, look off uh, to the east, uh, you would notice visibility is reduced a little bit as we have a few flurries and or snow showers moving through. Temperatures in the teens in some locations as far as the real field numbers go. And here's that little lone snow shower that's making its way 
uh, now out of uh, Indy into portions of uh, Hancock and also Shelby County. And there's still some spotty snow showers across parts of the area that'll rotate through at times. So for today, mostly cloudy skies. Don't be surprised if you see a few flurries here or there. But with the clouds, temperatures just really don't do much at all, Lauren, as we top off only right around the freezing mark later on this afternoon. All right, Todd, thanks so much for taking a look outside at your commute. Looking for some snow and it's difficult to see if there's any right here. Camera's a little bit blurry along I-74 and Pleasant View Road, but what you can see in this camera is that traffic is picking up here to our southeast, both eastbound and westbound, but everything is traveling smoothly and up to speed. So that is good news this Monday morning. Well, new this morning, an officer involved shooting is under investigation out in Grant County. Officers there were called to a house in Marion on reports of a stabbing. As a Grant County deputy started walking towards the scene, 25-year-old Daniel Young drove toward the deputy, causing that officer to jump on the hood of the car. The officer then fired several shots through the windshield. Young was taken to the hospital and later died. Police say Young stabbed a 53-year-old man multiple times. The officer was not injured. Raphael? Lauren, with the inauguration of Joe Biden now just two days away, the FBI and local police, Megan, are monitoring the possibility of protests breaking out at state capitals across our country. That's right, Rafael. Despite concerns for protests over the weekend, all remain quiet here in Indianapolis. But safety measures are still in place. Around the state house downtown, no parking signs are up now, and the state government complex will be closed to the public Tuesday and Wednesday. Also, the General Assembly will not be in session those days. The governor's office says there have not been any credible threats against the state house, but they are acting out of an abundance of caution. The Postal Service has also seen sealed off some mailboxes in the immediate area, area Lauren. Taking you out to Washington, D.C. now, security protocols continue to intensify ahead of the inauguration. About 25,000 National Guard members are on high alert. They're monitoring the Capitol. Our own George, Joe St. George is in Washington now with a look at the city's strategy to allow people to safely and peacefully gather. <laughs> Washington, D.C. is boarded up, checkpoints activated, black SUVs with flashing lights on every street near the Capitol. This weekend, a big test for authorities, with one person carrying 500 rounds of ammunition arrested Saturday after trying to use fake credentials. A day later, another arrest after police say a person impersonated a law enforcement officer and tried to use a military challenge coin to gain access. Describing D.C. as a fortress may be an understatement. The National Mall is closed until the day after the inauguration. Train stations near the Capitol and the White House are shut down. All major roads near inauguration activities are closed. Uh, it's tragic to see. Will Mulhern is a D.C. resident who has been to plenty of inaugurations. He, like many who live near the security perimeter, developing their own safety plans in case something goes wrong. I mean, I have talked with... Um uh, my partner about, you know, whose house is more secure. The Secret Service establishing two free speech zones for protesters. This is what it looks like. Plastic shields keeping them enclosed. This park location is close enough to see the Capitol, but quite far from the actual stage. We're here on Pennsylvania Avenue in a normal inauguration year. This is where the parade would begin. This year, well, everything has been reconfigured, and this area is known as the Green Zone. Just to get here, you need to pass through metal detectors. Security will be more intense on Wednesday. And while the security we're seeing here is unprecedented, the political division, well, it's not. When President Lincoln was inaugurated in 1861, threats of kidnapping, killing, and militias were present. The army officer in charge of security called that inauguration the most critical and hazardous event of his life. Sound familiar? I voted for Trump both times. Still, though, if you walk around D.C., you will find supporters of President Trump. Andy Lewis visiting from California. But he says any plans to storm the Capitol again or be violent would be idiotic, arguing the vast majority of Trump's supporters want peace. If you're going to do something, do it right. Do it the legal way. Do it peacefully. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Now to the latest on the spread of COVID-19 here in the Hoosier State. The State Department of Health reports more than 7,000 new cases were reported over the weekend. 590,211 total cases have been reported since March. 41 deaths were confirmed on Saturday and 24 more on Sunday. 776 Hoosiers have died with the virus so far in January. Raphael.
Uh, Megan, people are rolling up their sleeves. 296,000 Hoosiers have received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. We were there as a doctor from Riley Hospital for Children brought her elderly parents in to get their first shot over the weekend. Dr. Amy Wilson cares for children with kidney disorders. When the vaccine became available first last month, she quickly signed up to protect herself and her patients. Meanwhile, she's been worried for her parents who are both in their 70s. When the vaccine opened for their age group, she urged them to sign up. I guess it's just an overwhelming relief. <laughs> and getting the shot today is just, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it's been 10 months of uh, lost sleep and worry. And, you know, my, my mom had a, a little scare this summer where we thought she might have COVID. It turns out not to have been, but um, but it was terrifying. And so this, this really does represent a huge weight lifted. A lot of relief for that family. Dr. Wilson says her parents originally had an appointment closer to their home in Lebanon, but that was not until February. A good reminder, if you haven't scheduled your vaccine, you can get registered at any location that's convenient for you. Lauren, events this weekend in the Circle City brought hundreds of people to downtown businesses. Those include events like Disney on Ice and a cheer competition. That's right, and our own Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with what that little boost in business means to business owners here. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, good morning. So we spoke to the owner of Sauce on the Side, and he said the city is finally looking vibrant once again after nearly 10 months of shutdowns and lockdowns. And he says this weekend was the best weekend business-wise since the pandemic started. So Wednesday marked the first time since the pandemic started that paying spectators were welcomed back into Bankers Life Fieldhouse. The Circle City also hosted a national cheerleading competition this weekend. And a year ago this month, Sauce on the Side, which sits directly across from Bankers Life Fieldhouse, opened its doors. The owner says to go curbside and takeout got them through the pandemic, but he's excited more and more people are headed back downtown. As for questions on health concerns with more people coming downtown, Watson says he feels people are acting responsibly and doing their part to stay safe. We've been practicing it for nine months. We should be professionals by this point. Everybody, know, everybody knows what's going on. So the owner of Sauce on the Side says he hopes he can continue ramping up business as the years go on. Now, of course, we do know that there the countdown is on right now for the March Madness coming up, of, of course, in March. And so he says he's planning on hiring more staff to help be prepared for that. You can head to sauceontheside.com to apply. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, WRTD. Kelsey, thank you. Today, many people will spend their time helping others as a way to commemorate civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And as you know, Lauren, Hoosiers love to give and Hoosiers love to do. And there's several opportunities to serve right here on this day in central Indiana. The United Way of Central Indiana has set up a portal listing ways that you can connect with others on this holiday. Many of them are virtual, of course, because of the pandemic. There are also activities being offered around Indianapolis. A presentation honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is now set up on Monument Circle. And the Children's Museum of Indianapolis is offering free admission. You can find more opportunities right now on our website, WRTV.com. And President-elect Joe Biden and his wife are planning to spend the federal holiday volunteering in Philadelphia. They're scheduled to help out at a hunger relief organization called Philabundance. The president-elect is also scheduled to meet with his advisors later today. At 541, we want to get a check of our forecast back here at home. Todd, what's going on? Hey, uh, Lauren, just a few isolated snow showers making their way through the area here this morning. And they're all pretty light. I don't really think it's going to cause too much of an issue. The biggest issue would maybe be just some reduced visibility on the roadways, which uh, does include I-74 here as you work your way through uh, the far northwestern portion of Shelby County as you get ready to come in uh, to Marion County in the 465 uh, loop. But uh, most of these snow showers are getting ready to push east and southeast of 465 here uh, this morning. And other than that, there's not a whole lot going on across uh, central Indiana right now, but you still notice uh, patches of snow off to our west, and there's going to be more that are going to rotate through, especially as we get into the evening hours tonight. So 
lot of people I know uh, don't have to commute to uh, work, but if you're just going to be getting out on the roads uh, here at some point throughout the day today, just know there could be a few snow showers, uh, but nothing major. About 27 degrees this morning. By this afternoon, temperatures really don't do a whole lot getting up to 32. After sunset tonight, though, in southern locations, you'll have to be on the lookout for the potential of some accumulating snow. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Todd. An Indianapolis mother continues to fight for justice three years after her son's murder. How people around the world are helping her on her mission for answers. And quarterback Drew Brees may have played his final game in last night's playoff loss. Coming up, what he's saying about reports of possible retirement. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on WRTV. Champion your skin. Welcome back. We're keeping a close eye on your commute this Monday morning. Here's a live look at I-70 and Sherman Drive. You can see traffic there is traveling up to speed. We have a right shoulder blocked right now for some road work. But other than that, the travel lanes remain open. We'll continue to keep you updated if there are any slowdowns for your commute. Raphael. Well, Lord, this morning, Metro Police looking for two suspects after a man was fatally shot at a gas station parking lot. Take a close look at these surveillance photos of the suspects provided by police. The shooting happened on Sunday just before 3 a.m. at a marathon gas station near South Keystone and East Troy Avenues on the south side of Indianapolis. Investigators say the suspects they tried to rob two men in that parking lot and fatally shot one of them when they resisted. Now both suspects were told left the scene in a light-colored four-door sedan with tinted windows. If you have any information about this case or about the men you see there on the screen, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number, 317-262-TIPS. Raphael, an Indianapolis mother is now offering a reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction in her son's death. Today marks three years since her son Trayvon Mann was found dead in the area of 42nd and Post Road. And his mother Kathy is continuing to fight to get justice in his case. Kathy says people have reached out to her from around the world showing their support. Now she is able to offer a $10,000 reward. It's not just about Trayvon. There are so many unsolved murders in Indianapolis, um, not just of teenagers, but just in general. Um, and we need answers. There is someone out there that knows, um, if anybody has followed my story, they know the gruesomeness of what Trayvon endured in his final days. So you can't tell me that you don't know anything. And all we're asking is for the community to come together and give not me so much, but my daughter and his son the closure that they need. Kathy is urging anyone who has information about her son's death to call Crime Stoppers. And today, a vigil will be held to honor a community activist who was shot and killed last week. The vigil for Johnny Purchase, known as Mr. Johnny, will take place at 11 o'clock this morning at the Edna Martin Christian Center on the city's east side. He was shot last week in the New Bridges apartment complex over on 25th and Hillside Avenue. Vigil organizers say the killing happened while Mr. Johnny was spreading a message of nonviolence on behalf of the Edna Martin Center. After the vigil, several people will go out to the crime scene to set up a memorial site for Mr. Johnny. Megan. Raphael, I have a question for you. Is your New Year's resolution yes. still going strong? Oh, do we still do those? Maybe. I don't know. About this year? I, mean, I, I, I <laughs> stopped people. doing them only because I'm living in my living room. I mean, so the kitchen <laughs> is right there and the cookies and, and the potato <laughs> chips. But you are not oh, alone, right? You are not alone if you have forgot all of your New Year's resolutions because Ditch Day, did you know about Ditch Day? Ditch Day hit oh, yeah. over the weekend, which is the midpoint in January, when many people just give up, say, I'm done with this resolution business. But mental health experts say, don't be too hard on yourself this year, as challenges from the pandemic continue, of course, into the new year. A therapist say, if you had an external goal, like maybe losing weight, nope, or breaking a bad habit, maybe try focusing on those internal goals instead. Those are things like being mindful and having a positive attitude. And of course, our Todd Clausen always has 
a positive attitude even when it's bone chilling cold. <laughs> uh, it could always be worse, right, Raphael? You know, we're in the 20s it right now. Be. It could be in the teens. You're in the teens. You could be below zero this time of year. So uh, you have to look at uh, things on the bright side. Outside right now, uh, temperatures are sitting uh, currently in uh, the 20s and 30s across the area. There's a few flurries this morning uh, that you'll see if you're going to be out and about. Most of the afternoon is just cloudy and cool with temperatures just a couple degrees below normal. And then this evening, that is when we're going to start to get into some issues across parts of the area. You notice I have snow uh, south here. It's only in southern locations this evening that will start to bring in the potential for some light accumulating snow uh, in that area. Outside right now, the clouds are firmly in place. Temperatures, they currently sit in the 20s and 30s, 28 in India, as well as Bloomington and Bedford. 26, the current temperature in Tipton and Richmond. 28, the current temperature in Greenfield. We'll see temperatures hold pretty steady here here throughout the course of the morning hours with the clouds in place. There's just not much of a difference uh, that's going to take place or a change that's going to be significant enough until the sun comes up uh, to see those temperatures start to moderate just a little bit across the area. As far as the snow showers, we've had a few that have continued here in uh, to the overnight hours and now early morning hours for you as you get ready uh, for some of you to head out on the roadway. Some light snow showers through Shelby County up into portions of Hancock County in the Greenfield area. So on I-7 74, I-70, uh, US-40, and US-52 there through those counties. Uh, visibility probably going to be reduced a little bit. Could get a quick coating on the roads, uh, but it shouldn't be anything more than that. Still unsettled, though, when you look at the big pattern here with just areas of light snow rotating through but nothing substantial out there as far as a big organized uh, storm across uh, the area. Don't be shocked at any point throughout the day if you see a few flurries and or a snow shower, but it's really this evening that we start to bring in some heavier snow showers or more of a, a weak wave of moisture to come through. And this is 1030 at night, so this is after sunset. The daytime hours, again, it's just that hit or miss a snow shower. But if you're in places like Terre Haute, Bloomington, even up into Martinsville in the Edinburgh area, uh, just just know that you'll start to get into some accumulating snow. The fact that it's coming in after the sun has set will help the accumulation take place. Indianapolis kind of right on the border, so there may be uh, some very minor accumulation as the system goes through. But the good news is it's out of here by about 4 or 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. So for your Tuesday morning commute, I think we should be in, in decent shape. We're not talking about a lot in the way of snowfall in southern locations. Uh, there could be about 1 to 2 inches from Bloomington back towards uh, Terre Haute and Sullivan. Otherwise, we're only looking at about a half an inch to maybe an inch of snow there to the south to the north. You will avoid any accumulation with this system. Here's your seven day planning forecast. Tomorrow morning, a few flurries linger and then clearing. We get into some sunshine, partly cloudy on Wednesday. Thursday is probably the best day of the week with the sunshine and the warmest temperature up to 42 degrees before Lauren, we cool back down as we head into next weekend. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's take a look at your drive this morning. If you do have to head out to work early this morning, this is from our tower camera here looking down down at the south split south part of downtown. You can see traffic there is picking up a little bit. Lots of headlights moving across your screen. Everything's traveling up to speed though. No crashes, no delays here at this early hour. Raphael. Hey, Lauren, New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees reportedly considering retirement. A lot of Hoosiers, of course, interested in Drew Brees. Brees acknowledging fans as he went into the locker room following that playoff loss to Tampa Bay. He returned to the field with his family. Buccaneers Quarterback Tom Brady also joined him at that moment. The Purdue standout did not announce his intentions following the game. Instead, he says he has a lot of thinking to do, and so we'll see what happens. But many people are really, uh, they love their Drew Brees because of his time at Purdue. Megan? Oh, yeah. Well, thanks, Raphael. And jackpots for the Mega Millions and Powerball keep growing. This morning, a combined $1.5 billion are up for grabs. The next Mega Millions drawing is Tuesday, so note that down. And the $850 million pot is the third largest lotto prize in American history. Meanwhile, a drawing for the $730 million Powerball prize is set for Wednesday, Lauren. And Megan, lawmakers out in D.C. are thanking National Guard members for their security efforts, and one senator is doing it with candy. Now he's dipping into the Senate stash, coming up just after the break. 2020 Atlas Crossport Models. Welcome back. The keeper of the Senate's candy desk is sharing the sweet treats with National Guard members while they keep up with security efforts at the Capitol, Raphael. 
Did you, did you say candy? Where's oh, the yeah, candy? candy? Let me show you where the candy is. Maybe the, the Kit Kats and the Almond Joys, the stash, is located nearly a heavily used entrance on the Republican side of the Senate. And Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania, he keeps it really well and stocked. Candy makers from his home state, of course, pitch in to provide the goodies. Now, to put it to use, Mr. Toomey's office created care packages as a way to thank all the troops that are working there at the Capitol over the next several days. What a great way to share some food. Of course, Todd, we will never say no to candy. So <laughs> if Senator Toomey ever wants to stop in in Indiana and say hello, we will uh, take a Kit Kat or maybe a Snickers bar. Yeah, what do you think? Candies, cookies, cake. I mean, we, <laughs> we, 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 we take just about everything here. Uh, Raphael, <laughs> we're always always looking to fill our bellies. All right, outside right now, temperatures are in the 20s in all locations. 28, a pretty common number. Logansport, uh, Bloomington, Indianapolis. There's still a few snow showers that are out there uh, here this morning going through. They're all very, very light. That is the good news. Uh, I don't think it's going to cause too many issues on the roadways for you. And really, we just have that one that's left in Hancock as well as Shelby County. Now, going forward in this forecast, as we work our way into the coming days, we finally get out of this pattern where we have these snow showers off and on tomorrow some uh, snow early in the morning in southern locations then clearing and then the middle of the week's pretty nice before we cool down once again heading into uh, the weekend with our next storm system uh, not on track until potentially sunday as we enter next week the time now uh, that is 5 uh, 58 you're watching good morning indiana right here on wrtv stay with us we're back in just a couple minutes